The once mighty OCZ looked as though it was going to become a very dominant force in the SSD industry in the early days with their Vertex and Agility SSDs. Unfortunately, the company was never able to ward off reliability issues and this played a key role in their demise, which came in the form of Toshiba purchasing the company in early 2014. Since then, under the control of Toshiba, we've seen a few new products come out of OCZ, though truth be told, none of them have really been stellar. Last year, we reviewed the Triumph 100, the first OCZ SSD to feature both a Toshiba controller and A19 TLC NAND flash memory. The bar for TLC SSDs was set by Samsung in 2012, and frankly, that bar was set very high. As a company that develops everything in-house, Samsung has a massive advantage when it comes to new technologies because its controller and NAND teams can collaborate in a way that's not possible for other companies. Thanks to its parent company, OCZ was now in a similar situation, but unfortunately, they weren't able to deliver a package that could rival Samsung's already established Evo series. The initial MSRP was far too high, though OCZ was able to correct this before long. Today, the 480GB Triumph 100 costs $150, which is roughly the same price as the 850 EVO 500GB model. Regrettably, even with competitive pricing, the Triumph 100 can't hold a candle to the 850 EVO's performance, and even worse is the reliability. My Triumph 100 is still going strong, though I must admit it's seen very little use in the time I've had it and user reports online are very damning. For example, on Newegg.com, the majority of user reviews complain about failures. Just 38% of all users were happy with the drives, with 42% giving the lowest score possible, and almost all said the drive died within a few weeks or months. Having only had my Triumph 150 for a few days now, it's impossible to gauge how reliable not just my unit is, but the series as a whole. Moving past the reliability concerns, what does the Triumph 150 bring to the table? As the name suggests, the Triumph 150 is an incremental upgrade as it shifts focus from Toshiba's A19 nanometer TLC to their 15 nanometer TLC. Other than the adoption of this technology, the rest of the specifications go unchanged. The 480GB model that I have in hand boasts the same 550MB per second read speed and 530MB per second write speed. The Endurance still sees a total bytes written rating of 120TB which equates to 110 gigabytes per day over the three year warranty. With the specifications being largely unchanged, let's jump into the benchmark results. The Triumph 150 greatly improves the read and write access time of the previous model and provides their best results yet, making it faster than even the Samsung SSD 850 Pro. The Triumph 150 provided the same read performance as the Triumph 100, largely due to the limitations of the SATA interface. The write performance on the other hand was slightly improved and now matched the Samsung SSD 850 Pro and Kingston HyperX Savage. This graph is arranged by read result and interestingly the Triumph 150 was slower than the previous model. This is despite what can only be described as a truly massive jump in performance when looking at the write results. Here the Triumph 150 sustained 494 megabytes per second making it one of the fastest SATA SSDs tested and much faster than the Triumph 100. The random 4K performance of the Triumph 150 is slightly improved over the previous model, and while the read performance was actually very strong, the write result was lacking behind the competition. Although the Triumph 150 was technically faster than the Triumph 100 in the PC Mark Video Edition test, it's fair to say that the 2 megabytes per second increase is negligible at best. Unfortunately, this means while faster than the Triumph 100 and Kingston HyperX Savage, the Triumph 150 is still considerably slower than the bulk of its competition. This time, the Triumph 150 was slightly slower than the Savage, and although it did provide a reasonable performance gain over the Triumph 100, it was still much slower than the Samsung SSD 850 EVO and Crucial Drives, for example. The original Triumph 100 didn't perform particularly well in the PC Mark 8 storage benchmark, and frankly, the Triumph 150 isn't much better. Granted, it did outperform the Kingston HyperX Savage, though it was over 30% slower than the Samsung SSD 850 EVO. When it comes to serial ATA SSDs these days, particularly these TLC-based models, it's all about pricing and reliability. Performance is now less of a concern for a few reasons. Firstly, the limits of serial ATA 6 gigabits per second bus were reached quite some time ago now, so with the exception of small random transactions, there isn't a great deal to improve on. Secondly, those looking to invest in a TLC-based SSD are usually coming from a hard drive, and even the slowest modern SSDs are worlds faster than the fastest hard drive. That said, the OCZ Triumph 150 has more than medieval mechanical drives to worry about. Already in the TLC space, we have the tried and true Samsung SSD 850 EVO, as well as Crucial's own BX200 series. Looking at prices, they're all quite evenly matched. The Triumph 150 480GB model that we reviewed here currently costs $140, 
So at just 29 cents per gigabyte, this makes it around $10 cheaper than the previous model, which is great. This also makes the Triumph 150 480 gigabyte model around 8% cheaper than the 850 EVO 500. Though keep in mind, Samsung's slightly larger capacity means it works out to be roughly the same price at 30 cents per gigabyte. This makes the Triumph 150 a tough sell indeed, as it's clearly inferior to the 850 EVO in terms of performance and endurance. The 850 EVO has also been selling for over a year now, and user reviews are overwhelmingly positive. The Crucial BX200 is another option at a cost of just 27 cents per gigabyte for the 480 gigabyte model. Crucial sacrificed performance for price of their BX200 series, and frankly, I don't think the performance hit is worth the few cents you save per gigabyte. Overall, the Triumph 150 is another disappointing offering that come out of the OCZ and Toshiba collaboration. Given the horrible reliability track record of the Triumph 100, we wouldn't be confident in investing in the Triumph 150. This new series certainly has a lot to prove in the next 6 to 12 months. Let me know what you think about OCZ's new Triumph 150 SSD. Do you think I'm being too harsh or do you agree with my comments? Also, if you've been using the Triumph 100, please share your experience with us on our forum too at hardwareunbox.com. Thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe on your way out. See you next time. Yeah.